Uh, well, our, our team is based in three different countries. We have people in Ireland, our team manager. There is uh, three people is from uh, Poland, and there is uh, four other team members in Buenos Aires, Argentina. And you might think that this is like a hell and we cannot communicate, but actually it's quite easy. We have uh, strong processes to do so every day at certain time. We have a virtual stand-up, which is like a regular agile method, but applied to the internet and the and the, with now with those these conference tools, we can see each other face. We can see if anyone is not happy, and we we keep our tasks on tools online. So we are very very. Uh, uh, aware about the, the processes online, so uh, it, it's been working really, really nice. Usually when you have a, a programming language, uh, you have uh, several alternatives to pick. There are like, let's say, 20 main programming languages, and the particularity with the functional programming languages that, is that they allow you to create compact code. And by compact, I mean that you can write the same stuff with less lines of code. And our client has uh, 10k lines of code. It's easier to access to it. We, we understand that we are building open source software, so we like people to get into it, to look into it, to analyze it, to look for bugs, for security issues, and also you have less lines to go to maintain so, uh, and to test. So we don't like to work extra uh, maintaining those lines. So that's, that's a good property that, we, that Scala provides us as a functional programming language. Well, people can get involved in our client. They, they can uh, check our repository. It's in GitHub. It's public. All the debates and all everything, all the issues, all the, the code, the tests, everything is there. You can create pull requests. You can create issues. There, are all, there is also a special channel in Ethereum Classic Slack uh, application that you can leave us bugs if you want to. We are welcome to receive any, any issues and we will take care of them. We think that we are finishing the first step, which is uh, stabi stabilizing the application, and creating the release candidate, which is really, really important. We have, we have built this from ground up, so it's not an easy task. Uh, it's been a long journey. Uh, so uh, the next year we will be working on the new EIP, ECIPs. Uh, we will be adding a lot of functionality that is pending there. We will be also adding more functionality to the Deadless Wallet in order to create uh, a development environment so people can deploy their contracts and, and use our client to access the Ethereum Classic network. So first, let me introduce myself. My name is Alan. I'm from Buenos Aires, Argentina, far away, so I'm still with jet lag, if you're wondering that. Um, I'm a software engineer. I've been into cryptocurrency world for about three years. Uh, I'm also a member of the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency NGO back in my country. And I've been working with Ethereum Classic and Graphic team for about a year. And today's speak, I'm going to tell you about the work that has been done for about the, the whole year. So let's begin. This is the whole team. We like to say that we are a distributed team Without counting IHK, we are from, uh, from three countries. Uh, our project manager, Alan McSherry, he is from Dublin, Ireland. Uh, Lukasz and Radek, they are from Poland. Uh, Mirko, Javier, uh, Nico and I, we are from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Um, so a year ago, uh, about January, December, we started working on this new client. We started from scratch, just with a blank text editor and the yellow paper. Uh, that has been written by Kevin Good. It's the Ethereum formalization. Um, and I will tell you in a few slides uh, about all the work that has been done. But I, I also want to tell you about the things that we've done contributing to the open source community. We have uh, posted corrections to the yellow paper. We have also raised issues on, another, on other repositories. And we have also posted and published some fixes on those repositories, and not only related to Ethereum uh, space, but uh, on the libraries that we use, for example, the database engine. So here you can see the milestones. Uh, on March, we released, it, it was an internal release, but we released the uh, blockchain synchronization, which is basically grabbing all the blocks, the state accounts and everything, and storing them on a local machine, and grabbing that data from other peers. 
On May, we released the transaction execution, which is a, a new EVM, Ethereum Virtual Machine Implementation, also from scratch. Um, and in August, we released our first public, uh, we made our first public release, it's called Beta 1, and it includes the web RPC, which allowed us to connect to our node from a wallet or a decentralized app. We also included the uh, block creation, uh, which is also known as mining, and the database pruning, which allows you to remove and use data from your database to keep it uh, small and release some disk space. And we have two more upcoming uh, releases. Hopefully, before Christmas, we will be releasing the release candidate one, which will include the peer discovery, the data loss wallet integration, I will speak about that later, and the monetary policy, ECIP 1017, uh, and stabilization based on the bugs that we found and the beta release. And in January, we are going to release our first stable version. So before starting, I told you that a year ago, we started from ground up this client and a, a decision had to be made. It, and it was what programming languages and which environment should we use to build this brand new client? And luckily, uh, Scala was decided. And there were two main reasons. The first one is that Scala runs on the Java Virtual Machine, which is a battle-tested environment. Uh, it has been running in production for years, and it's quite stable and good to work with. But also, and the one that it's, uh, I like most, is that uh, Scala allows you to uh, program in functional programming paradigm. And that's important because it allows you to create uh, less and more secure code. And why it's that? Uh, because uh, First of all, it, it allows you to create more compact code. Using, if you try to create some algorithm in Scala, you can create it with less lines than you, sh you would use using another language, for example, let's say Java. And that's important because there's less code to write, to read, to understand, and to test, and to maintain. So that's uh, something that it's really, really important. And from that, you can see that with less code, it's easier to read. And we know that we are building open source software and we want other people around the world look at it, review it, test it. So if the code is more readable, it's, it's quite important for us. It's, it's a good uh, thing. Also, functional programming, it's closer to math. And what I mean by that? You can think of a set of functions and an algebra and how to compose them in order to create a program. And that's good because you can think of tests as a mathematical assertions. And that's so you can create a more robust and more robust software, uh, ensuring the quality and the uh, and it's a better code for us. And last but not least, as how you think about the code, it, it allows you to create complex applications uh, easier because I, I'm not going to get into the internals, but how the, it deals with state and with this kind of less code, you can create more robust software for more complex application, for example, an Ethereum Classic node. So uh, I'm not going into the details of our project, uh, software development process, because it's like, um, it's an agile development, classic agile development process, but I, I like to emphasize on three or four items that we like to uh, a lot. First one is that every time we finish a task and it's ready to be merged to our code base, it's reviewed by other two team members. And they are not only looking for bugs, but they are looking for, they are checking code styles, check that the code looks good, check that there is no security issues. So that's quite important to ensure our quality. Also, um, we have, we, we don't consider a task being done if it has no tests. So uh, any task that has any test is not even reviewed. So. That way we keep ensuring our quality. And we have also some automated tools integrated to our development process. And every time we push code to our remote repository, test a run and style, uh, the style is being checked in order to ensure that we are building a good quality software. So here are some numbers. Um, we have written so far 10K lines of code. And we have written 1K automated tests to prove that our code is, is working fine. And we have uh, integrated our code base with Ethereum test suite. 
Ethereum test suite is a set of tests that uh, were written to be meant to run on any uh, Ethereum node, not just ours. And it checks uh, stuff like consensus rules, change organizations, virtual machine performance, any corner cases that you might imagine. And we are running those tests every time we push our code to the to the, our repository. So uh, this is a tricky metric. Uh, it's called code coverage. It uh, it represents the the amount of lines that are being run by at least one of our tests. And it's it's a tricky metric because usually having a hundred percent code coverage is not worthy. But what, we use this as a sensor. So every time we push our code, we check this number, and if this number goes down, something might be wrong. We are not doing enough tests, for example. So we are constantly constantly watching this number. Okay, this is a graph. I I don't want to uh, pay attention to the numbers. They are not important now, but. I want to show you something, two things about this graph. The first one is that we have four uh, states on our task process. The task can be open when it was defined. Uh, it, it's in progress when we are working on it. It's, when it's moved to verify when it's ready to be reviewed and it's done when it has been merged. So there are two things important here. As you can see this uh, blue area, it represents the tasks that have been done and here you will see all the dates. So we have been constantly working on improving our client uh, up to date. Uh, and the second one, which is uh, something like a yellow, uh, it represents the, the open tasks. And I want you to, to take from that yellow area that we, there are a lot of tasks to be done and a lot of things to improve and, fit, and new cool features to add to our client. And this is another uh, graph. It's a little bit tricky too. Uh, it's the commits per month. Commits is the minimum unit of work that a developer pushes to our repository. And I want you to take two things from this graph. The first one is that you can see on, the, on January, February, March, and April that there are more commits. And they represent the heavy lifting that we have done starting from scratch this client. And in the, next few, in the next month, you can see that we are still working on this. So, and it's a funny fact that there are 11 commits per active day. So I told you that the next release is called, it's called Daedalus. So you might be wondering what's Daedalus. Here is a nice screenshot. Um, so Daedalus is an open source, brand new uh, wallet created from scratch using uh, web technologies. It's highly secure, and it was developed by IHK. And in the next release, you are going to be able to download this wallet and connect to Mantis code, and connect to the network, and start using your Ether, and working with them, receiving Ether, sending Ether. And it's meant to have plugin support, so it will be extended. Um, and I have a little demo for you. I'm not going to do it. It's just a video. So if you guys can remember, this is a, an early version. OK, here is loading. OK, this is the main screen of the wallet. Uh, as you can see, you, have mul you can have multiple wallets there. And on a, on a top bar, you have all the, the actions that can be made, like send, receive. I'm going to create a new wallet here. You can put any name you want to, for example, my new wallet, daily expenses, whatever you want to. Uh, and you can password protect it. Uh, it, it, it enforces some, uh, some password, uh, it has some password requirements. And when you create it, I'm going to create it now. Uh, it, it, it gives you, take a look at the UX. It, it asks you to wait and read this message, which, is, which li will lead you to the next screen where you will take note for the private key. Uh, you cannot stall anything from there. It's a testnet, so uh, it's OK. Um, so uh, it will take some time because I'm writing the, <laughs> the words here. Uh, it, because in the next step, it will ask me to put the same uh, private key. This is the, the same private key as you use in other wallets. Um, so it, will, it took me some time. <laughs> 
Um, but, but as you can see, there is a lot of uh, effort put on the UX and UI uh, in order to protect your ether. So now I'm going to insert the, the keys. Yeah, I should have written those down, yeah. Uh, so while well, I put those keys, in, in, in about a month, you will be able to download this and start up a client, and you can do this on any platform, Windows, Linux, and Mac. And you don't need to download the client. The client will be embed on this, uh, on this wallet. Well, um, here are some advices. Okay, so now my wallet is going to be created. It's connected to the node using the web API that we have defined. So you can see there's my new wallet with the Ethereum Classic uh, logo. And you can send and receive Ether. I'm not going to show that in this demo, but you can, I, I'm going to show you the, the screens. So you can, for example, uh, copy an address and place it on the, you can use the clipboard. It's a native application. Uh, and you can, for example, click on send, and you can put the address. You can insert the amount, and it will calculate the fees for you. So you don't need to worry about that. And when you hit next, and uh, there, OK, you will see that you, a summary of the transaction, and you need to insert your password. Uh, and you can receive using a QR, so you don't need to copy paste that. You can just send the QR and that can be scanned. And uh, what else? Well, there is a screen where you will be able to see a transaction that's in progress, so I'm not showing that. Uh, you can change the name of the wallet. And also, you can change the password, of course. And you can have nice themes and change the, the look and feel of your wallet based on your, your tastes. OK, so that's it. Uh, can you? No. OK, no problem. So uh, I'm going to show you uh, some uh, pictures of our team just to close up this, uh, this talk. Um, Okay, no, no worries. Technical difficulties always happen. Uh, I know a lot of jokes, but they are in Spanish, so <laughs> I'm not telling you anyone. So this is the team. We have been gathered in, in Athens uh, a few months ago. There we were discussing about uh, the ledger and the transaction execution. So you can see that on our faces. Uh, Uh, we were discussing, but we are we, we are we are a good team. We we don't fight. We just discuss. Uh, so, well, I think that could be it. Uh, well, that's us coming to the picture. Okay, here we are. We, are, we were in the Athens University. We had our space there. And here we are, again, drinking some coffee. But because we like coffee, we are nerds. And this, uh, this was a meeting in Poland uh, with the guys. And thank you very much uh, for listening.